Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. Michael and All Angels. We're glad that you are here to join us for worship. Those of you joining us online, I hope you will download today's bulletin so you can join us in our prayers and our singing. Now standing as you are able, let's join together in our opening hymn. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Be you, now and Amen. 
Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we can either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first lesson. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it's not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper as his partner. So, out of the ground, the Lord God formed every animal of the field and every bird of the air and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all cattle, to the birds of the air, to every animal of the field. But for the man, there was not found a helper as his partner. So, the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed it up its place with flesh, and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man, he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of man this one was taken. Therefore, a man leaves his father and his mother and clings to his wife, and they become one flesh. The word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Some Pharisees came, and to test him they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house of the disciples, then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. You know, I have never given a proper full sermon on divorce and adultery. And I won't today either. You know, I saw, I wanted to kind of like see who squirmed. No, it's all right. We're going to talk about children instead. That's so much better. Today, as we pivot into October, we're about halfway through our gifted sermon series. And this sermon series and the series we've been doing in our podcast during the week have all been centered on this idea of giftedness. We are endowed with gifts, and then we are called to use those gifts in the world. And you've hit, heard us ring that bell over and over and over again for weeks. Today, we actually pivot from that sort of discovery of gifts and the use in time and talent to actually that use of gifts in treasure. Everything is necessary. As we give, we wish to give more. As we give more of our time, we want to give of our talents and treasure. As we give more of our treasure, we want to give more of our time and our talents. And it's this wonderful, virtuous cycle that takes us up and up and up. Today, we really pivot toward that treasure idea, that idea of generosity. And it is anchored right here in today's gospel lesson. In today's lesson, Jesus says, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. Now, when I start thinking of children, I think of going to visit our kids at the St. Michael Episcopal School. I go over to the St. Michael School regularly, and over the last few months, I've actually gone to read stories to the kindergartners, and I love reading stories. And the first time I went, They were so excited to tell me all about what each other was doing. And I thought that was delightful. They all had a fun story about what good things everyone else in the school, in the classroom had done. And then after telling me all about that, we went to sit down on the floor so we could read the book. And they were so sweet to each other, finding space for each other. They wanted to make sure everybody had a space on the carpet and could see the book. And then as I started reading the book, 
I tend to pick books that encourage yelling or cheering of some kind because, of course, and the book I had picked that day, if you've not read Stop That Pickle, I highly encourage you to do so. A pickle jumps out of a jar in a cafe and then runs down the street and everyone has to chase the pickle. And at the end of every page, what do you have to yell? Stop that pickle, of course. And so watching the children encourage each other to yell and like really get into it, right? And don't just say stop that pickle, but yell stop that pickle. It was wonderful to watch them love each other so much. That generosity, that desire to be in community, that, that hope that you see in young children is really how we are made to be. I think of them when I think of what Jesus says here. To receive the kingdom of God as a little child necessarily begs the question, how would a little child receive the kingdom? And I think we can all imagine the generosity that children show naturally to one another, desiring to share and uplift and encourage. I think children receive God's kingdom with that incredibly generous spirit. And today we're invited to think back on when we had that same unabashed, shameless kind of generosity in our own spirit. You see, I think we're made to be generous. We are made to give of ourselves. If I were to ask you, what makes someone happy? We often think about achievements getting things that we want, working hard and consuming things. And yes, getting stuff and reaching goals and reaching achievements is something that will make us happy for a moment. It will change our mood. But when we talk about happiness as that deep joy, that anchor, that rootedness of joy that we can find in God, that joy that God gives to us, that we can then reflect to others, actually, being generous is what makes us truly happy. And don't take my word for it. There's lots of research that goes to back this up. A recent study of tens of thousands of people in North America showed that happiness is gained most when we give and give generously. In fact, you would need more than twice your income to actually impact the happiness that being generous in the community gives to people. And that is true in every single income bracket. The stuff that the world tells us is very important makes us feel good for a moment. But when we get in touch with our generosity, with our power to give to others, that's the kind of happiness, that's the kind of joy that is not just momentary, but sustaining deep and rich. And then here's the trick. It's not just about giving. It's actually about how we give. So let's talk about how we give for a moment. Think about the past, our human condition. In the past, we used to live in small little community groups. We were not globalized. We knew everybody. And when somebody needed help, we helped the person and we knew them and we saw the impact of our help. That is totally different than entering our credit card on a website. We are made to actually know the people in need, to help them when they are in need, to give generously, and then to see the impact of our gift. That's why in this research, there are actually three ingredients for that good, joyful feeling about giving. The first is that connection piece. We're made to know one another, to experience one another, all the good and the bad. And it is in that knowing that we see piece number two, which is the impact of our giving. Seeing the impact of when we give is critical for us to be reinforced in that joy of generosity. And finally, we need the choice, the choice to give, because if giving is ever coerced, it loses its joy. The generosity that we are called to around our own gifts is not something that is simply a good idea. It actually gets at the heart of how we were made, of who we were made to be. This idea of happiness and joy. Happiness isn't permanent, 
Nobody gets happy and stays happy permanently. Happiness takes effort. It takes constant attention. We need to regularly engage with ourselves, look at the way we live, how we are generous, how we use our gifts, because just because we made a good decision years ago doesn't mean that that decision has constantly impacted the joy that we experience. We all know, in perhaps a more real way than ever, how important it is to be together. Two years ago, we could have preached this interesting theoretical sermon about the pain of being separated. Now we know, we know very truly that being divided and separated, quarantined, feels bad. We so desire the connection, but being together isn't good enough. And being together means a lot. I have been told every week for weeks now, by people who come and share on Sunday mornings and throughout the week how great it is to finally be, be back together in person again. Yes, and it's not enough. That's that momentary feel good. But to really get that deep joy, that transformative joy that sustains us for days and weeks and years, a lifetime, we're talking about generosity. If you think about the way the church played a role throughout this entire pandemic, maintaining connection, continuing to inspire and encourage, actually going out and meeting needs of people with generosity, people we know, I think we can all say we see the capacity. We see the potential. We can feel the purposeful nature of the work that we do here in this place. And so today, you knew it's coming. Today, we are being invited to use our gifts with more energy, with more purpose, with a higher level of generosity and vision for actually leaning into and being transformed more and more into the people God has made us to be. What you will receive this week in your homes is a packet of information that explains just how much our generosity together is impacting not only this community, but the world outside these walls. And the invitation, the ask, is that you give and give more. And in that giving, reach much deeper down into your spirit to connect yourself to that childlike generosity that we began with and have sort of lost some along the way. Here together in this community, we can actually reinforce one another, encourage one another to be more the people that God made us to be. And by the way, it will feel good. It will feel good even beginning today because I have a little fun thing for you. Out in the hallway, we are engaging particularly our children and the young at heart with a fun little scavenger hunt for Jesus. So, you ever played a scavenger hunt for Jesus? I haven't yet, I'm going to today. Every Sunday in October, we are going to place, I might say hide, but he's not that hidden, hide a Jesus doll, literally six foot tall Jesus doll, it's impressive, somewhere on the campus of the church, and you and your young friends are invited to go hunt for Jesus. And when you do, you'll discover up areas of the church you may not know. And with each of those areas of the church all this month, we will highlight one of the spiritual gifts that we are called to use together in this community. It's a little fun and a little spirit to help encourage each of us in our own shift toward generosity. Now I've invited you into something important. Many of you here have made the leap and some have not. You are not alone. For those of you who may be considering a gift for the first time, for those of you who might actually know very honestly your gift is not quite the kind of generosity that you could give, no, you're not alone. All of us can be stretched. 
All of us can be challenged. All of us can lean into the invitation God makes to us to find that deeper joy. We are all given gifts. We are all made to generously use those gifts. And so I'm asking you to go beyond nice and to reach for that generous. And when we do together, not only will we be able to do more and more in the world, but you will find that deep, true well of joy that will sustain you forever. Amen. Let us now continue by affirming the church's faith in the word of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now pray for the state of God's world and God's church. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone, for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation, For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, George and Michael, our bishops, our parish clergy, and their families, for the clergy spouses and families, the surviving spouses of clergy, and for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. We pray for all those on the St. Michael prayer list and for Scott Calhoun Austin Disney, Bradley Flores, Mary Henderson, Jose Mata, John Morlock, Catherine Tomko, Donna Smith Wright. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all of the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God our King. And praise your name. We pray for all who have died, especially Creed Lamar Ford Jr., Macon Riddle, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please, be, please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning once again, everyone. Very glad to see you today. If you are new or visiting with us this morning, please know you are very welcome. I'd encourage you to grab one of the pew cards in front of you, fill it out with your contact information, and we will be in touch or visit our website, stmichael.org, and click the visit button. Let us know how to be in touch with you so we can help to shepherd you and connect you to this St. Michael community so you can grow deeper in your own discipleship. Just a few notes. Our 75th anniversary continues. I hope you enjoyed last Sunday's extravaganza for the Feast of St. Michael and All Angels. And we continue today with the blessing of the pets this afternoon in the West Side parking lot at 4 p.m. Our own Don Spafford, who is right here with us, worshiping with us today, is going to be there to bless all of your lovely pets. And so I hope you will join him this afternoon with your pets so that you can get them off on the right track. And then looking ahead on Wednesday, October 6th, we launch our Women of St. Michael luncheon series. And so all the women of the church are invited to participate in that. And there's more information on our website and ways that you can buy tickets. And then finally, as I noted, we are beginning our stewardship campaign, campaign this year, which is the invitation that we all have to share our treasure with the church community. And so I'm inviting you to consider what that will look like for you this year. You'll receive packets in the mail this week that you can see the work that has been done, the work that we hope to do, and can consider the way you can make a real impact in your giving. And beginning today, if you've got some young people or you just want to enjoy it, do run by the stewardship table on your way out to get a little scavenger hunt hit, hunt hint, so that you can go find Jesus somewhere in the church. And for all of our young people, there are little buttons where you can get stickers each week of October when you find Jesus. It's so fun. You're going to love it. And so run by that table as you go before you leave. And I thank you for your continued generosity as we support our shared mission and ministry together. Now let's walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit, you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
gifts of God, for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your heart by faith with thanksgiving.
please kneel as we continue with the post-communion prayer. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and always. Amen. Would you please stand? Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be God.